the Hercules Beetle. Not to be confused with the Eastern Hercules Beetle. Or the Western, apparently a popular name. There's people to the East and there's people to the West attempting to claim this name. This is a species of rhinoceros beetle. So not only is it not to be confused with two of almost the same names, it is something else. A rhinoceros beetle, native to the rainforests in Central America and South America. It is the longest existing species of beetle in the world. It's existed the longest. Longer than cockroach. And is right up there among the largest of insects that fly as well. This should be an interesting beetle, fellas. It is known for its tremendous strength. <clears throat> to bring its name back up and re-mention how Hercules is strong and everything would be rhetorical and dumb, so I'm not gonna do that. But Wikipedia did. Average adult body size, including the thoracic horn. It's called the thoracic horn. I think its head goes under and its eyes are down there. And then over, top-wise there, comes that horn off of the thorax. Don't melt. You know don't. I was like a millisecond too late there and the fan went off. Stupid heater. They are the longest species of beetle in the world. And that length was uh, two inches to 3.3. Mine's four and a half, so. Oh, but the Hercules beetle may reach up to seven inches and mine's four and a half. So mine's a very realistic size. Cool. Only the males possess the large horn. And they're all generally about, all the males generally have a very large horn. There is a horn coming off the head on the bottom there. It's like a pincher thing. And then there's one coming over the top. Not much is known about the life cycle of this bug in the wild. Most of what they know has come from just captive bred populations of these bugs. There's a gestation period for females of 30 days, laying up to 100 eggs on the ground or in dead wood. It takes 27.7 days for these things to hatch. When they're hatched, they're just the larva. And then they grow. Into that unholy monstrosity of a thing right there. Maybe somebody thinks that's cute. I just feel sorry for that person. Saprozylophagus. The larva of the Hercules beetle is Saprozylophagus, which means they eat rotting wood. That's all that they eat, rotting wood, during their two-year developmental stage of being that nasty thing. The adult cool beetle thing that that nasty thing turns into feeds on fresh and rotting fruit too. Peaches, pears, apples, grapes, they like fruit. These beetles are nocturnal and they burrow within the leaf litter during the day. Leaf litter. <laughs> This bug is capable of creating a huffing sound by stridulating their abdomen against their elytra, against their elytra, to serve as a warning to predators. E-L-Y-T-R-A. That's too many continents in a row. Elytra. Maybe that's what it sounds like and that's why that word is that way. Stridulation is the act of producing sound by rubbing together a certain body parts. Okay. And when this beetle does that, it sounds like elytra. Elytra. I'm a Hercules beetle. Alert. They got some chemo sensors, specialized sensory receptor cells, which transduce a chemical substance to generate biological signals. They do that. They have eyeballs so they can see too. And they have a mechanical perception. I'm assuming that's just sensory antennas and stuff in front of their face sensing the environment they're in. Experiments on Hercules beetles have shown that a male placed in the vicinity of a female will immediately orient towards her and seek her out, suggesting chemical communication. That's why they think there's chemicals involved. Maybe he sees her too. They have eyes. Okay, outside of captivity now, in the natural environment, it has been observed that the male will engage in combat to win possession and mating rights to females. They will fight to the death. And they typically use their large horns to settle the, the mating disputes. <laughs> Unfortunately, these fights can cause significant damage, physical damage to the combatants. It has also been observed that they have caused physical damage to the female as a result of the combat, incidentally. They attempt to grab the other male and pin their rival between the cephalic and the thorac horn. Thoracic, sorry. To lift and throw them. They're doing this to lift and throw them. They're trying to throw them. All of this to win just one incident of mating rights to a female. They still remain polygonous, polygonandry. They still remain that, savages. They just wanted to fight each other to like there's probably other females and stuff. They just wanted to fight. This beetle is capable of carrying up to 850 times its body mass. Holy smokes. So if you're 180 pounds, that's a human being capable of lifting 153,000 pounds. If you're 180 pounds, that is. Wow. But then in the next sentence, it says the more realistic figure is about 100 times its body weight. It, it adds at the end of saying how much they can lift. 
on Wikipedia here it says at which point they can barely move probably because they're getting squished to death. This bug is not a pest. It's not a disease factor of a bug. They can be kept as pets. They're just nice little bugs that don't overpopulate or cause any problems at all. They're a big, cool, aggressive towards just each other. It says nothing about aggression to other stuff. It's another short article on Wikipedia. And as a result of that, fun facts are over. Guys, it's the ultimate beetle spin. I just thought of that. I don't know, a dung beetle might serve as a better ultimate beetle spin. I was talking with a buddy last night about making a dung beetle and it's jointed. One piece is the turd and the other piece is the beetle. Maybe a two piece beetle, three piece lure, turd, beetle, beetle. It's an option. On with painting. Two colors, one cup. And uh, 40, 30, balancing clear. You're supposed to add this 10% by volume. It quote unquote improves flow and adhesion. And today, we're starting with light gray. That is bright red, under the horn. And then straight to the detail smoke black for the head. Black head, poopy body, that is how these are. That is deceptive. Because what I think it is, is raw umber. Very, very not green, but a little bit of green, mostly black, but not even a lot of black. This is a weird color. That's how I describe it. And then over that super transparent red with a tiny bit of pearl red, then I'm gonna speckle it with black. That's what that is. That's gotta be what that is. You know what it actually is. This'll be just iridescent red, I think. I'm gonna add it to the umber. And some 4012 to reduce it. I'm so correct about that. That is color match right there. It's a good start. I think some pearl white on this will do it favors even. And some good old wine is gonna make this perfect. Can you guys see the iridescent red on the belly? That was actually a really quick and easy paint job. The eyeball goes like right there. That looks pretty goofy. I like it. Did you guys notice all of that iridescent red? Oh my goodness. That looks cool. Good old twist wire hardware that I just installed and forgot to turn on the camera. I get so excited. As you get closer to the end, it's hard to concentrate on important things like turning on the camera. Two on the front, four on the back. These are Zowire owner treble hooks. These are no joke. And now it's just a matter of finishing the spinner. That is an absolute honker of a blade too. It's a big blade. We're gonna go big or we're gonna go home. A little blade like that's pathetic. I know the original beetle spins have tiny blades, but let's go big. Look at those tiny propellers I have. We need to make something with those someday. Where are my rivets? Okay, rivet, found it. That took forever. And a big red bead. We're gonna grab it, bend it down. And I don't wanna shoot the body. Snip it. And just like that, that was an easy build. That took very little time.
I put the super glue on the inside of those twists. Perfect. That looks good. It is time to go see this in the water. Let's check the spinach down here first though. And I am very, very up in the air about what this is gonna look like. Okay, that was pretty amazing for a second. What, what was that? What is that? Look at that. It doesn't want to spin, it wants to crank. I wish there wasn't so much crap in here. This is not a good place to test a lure. Look at What in the world is that? Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. It waggles. That is not a crank, that is a waggle. When the spinner spins, it's upside down. I would need a lot more weight in the butt, but it's pretty easy to get it to do the waggle. There's a chance. Before we fix it, we are going to fish it. Thumbnail. I don't know, I might go with 3 8 inch holes. Like right here and right here, since this piece is so wide. Maybe that's how I fit more weight into it. See how much of a half inch hole we can fit behind it though. Man, that feels disgusting to do. But we're gonna do it again. I think that was 11 drops each side. 14 in the back. That feels heavy. You were expecting baking soda, weren't you? Medium thick black super glue's got this, fellas. Kind of a noticeable patch job, but I don't really care. There's more weight in it now. Probably over twice as much weight in it now. Let's see what it weighs. Less than two ounces, 1.8. Get back out there and try to get it done. Let's check if Pike Spot's still frozen. Oh my goodness, look at this, fellas. It's clean, not a bunch of gunk in it. Ice out. It's working. Blade's a little crooked. There we go. But it's working. If I catch a big pike from up here, that's gonna be a problem. I think most fishermen overlook things like that though. Something's gotta come up and sniff. And if it sniffs, these Zowire owner treble hooks will hook it. They can hook a sniff. What was that? Probably rubble. Bubble. Was that a fish that just bit the nose off of this? Or excuse me, the thoracic horn? I don't know if I got good video of that or not, but that was some thuddage. Oh no. Just gonna pull it through and pray. Is this a fish? That's gotta be a log. Or a turtle. Oh my, this is a fish. I caught something. Is this a catfish? No. No, I snagged it. Looked like a catfish for a second. I think it's a, yeah, that was a really big drum. Dang it. What was the name of the other horn? Was that the, the cephalic. Both horns are broke. I think that was a really big drum. I can't believe how hard that thing pulled. It was a snag for like 10 seconds and then stopped being one. Yeah, after the horn removals, this bait works better than ever. Oh. I was just checking to see how stuck it was, you know? I probably should have retied like 50 casts ago. There's a nice early season lesson learned. Retie or lose fish. More importantly, the bait for me, you know. Maybe I'm a little rusty. It's not too out of the question, you know. It's been a long winter. It's been a normal length winter. That was the first time in quite a while, you know.
I forgot how hardly they can whoop you. I have no bait to do close-ups of for the end of the video or anything, so this video's over. On to the next bait. Guys, I'm a Hercules beetle, so mine's a very realistic size. What in the world is that? Polygonerous. They can hook a sniff. Lure, turd, beetle, beetle. You know don't. This is a fish. You were expecting baking soda, weren't you? 